The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA and one of the hosts of Last Week Brain Cells and the host between two minutes on Oriented Television. Like to welcome those watching on local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube. Um, this week we got we, this week we we continue our football coaches um guests this week. This week we got the um coach of the Oxford Wildcats. We got Coach Zach Line here. Coach, thank you for coming on the pod this week. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Um, when you look at of course um Oxford, obviously of course your playing career. Um, you made some changes this off season. Um, a lot in the last couple of years you went from a blue helmet to a yellow helmet um what was your um was that your idea to go from a blue helmet to a yellow helmet uh i think we we're just kind of looking to make a uniform change and that kind of went best with our with our look so um you know i don't think there was really too much thought that went into that it was just kind of you know, let's see how this looks it looks all right um and it looks really good i really like the um i really like the uniform um the the um, yellow pants, the blue pants, you know what I mean? It looks really good. Just one thing for the record, just don't wear white pants, you know what I mean? Because I think that's a curse around Oxford, I guess. Oh, we won't go white then. Well, don't go white, you know what I mean? Don't go white, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, we'll, we'll, we'll stay away. Yes. Um, when you look at last season, obviously, when you look, I mean, like, um, it was like you started off 0-3, playing a murder's roll of a schedule, and then you turned it around, you went, I think you went 5-1 in your last six games, um, beat Chippewa Valley, make the playoffs, and then you beat Clarkston. Um, can you recap last season for me, please, if you could? Yeah. You know, I, I think last year and last season was a testament of just a team coming together. Um, you know, you you have you, – you just keep plugging away at the same things. You know, a lot of times you're looking for different answers or, um, man, this is not working, let's throw it out. And we just kept sticking to it. We just kept getting better and better and better. And the kids started believing each other more and more and more. You know, I just remember sitting there at one and four, and we were a better team than that. You know, we had some close games during that stretch. You look at a couple that you let get away, turn over here, turn over there. Um, but we're sitting at one and four, and I've never seen a team with with more energy, more focus, uh, more love in the locker room than what we had going in at one and four. And we just we just kept saying the next game is the most important. Let's just get one at a time. Every single one is worth a unit. So. It um, doesn't matter for one or four. We win, you know, we went out, we're good to go. So, um, you know, credit to them and the team. They believed in us. They, we believed in them. And, um, you know, they came out to play week by week. When you look at you guys last year, you guys had a lot of experience. Obviously, Brady Carpenter, quarterback. Of course, you had a lot of proven experience. Um, when you look at you guys and then you look at the playoffs last year, you went into Clarkston and – you just you had Sal Vicaro basically had the game of his life, went off for four touchdowns in that game against Clarkson. Clarkson's a pretty good team. I mean, like, we know that. But talk about that Clarkson game a little bit from last year in the postseason. You know, Clarkson's a great team, you know, and they had a they had a great coach, obviously, who just retired in Kurt Richardson. Um, you know, I think our kids come out and play a little different against Clarkson. Uh, they see it as as a rivalry. You know, when I was here it was always Lake Orion was a big rival. Um, and I'm trying to build that back up, but um, it seems like they have a bigger rivalry with Clarkston, so um, they have a little bit of a little bit different moxie about them coming to that game. But uh, I think if you go back and you watch the film, our line was playing at a whole different level. You know, I know Sal was an exceptional runner; he had a really good feel for how we were running things. But our line was opening up, opening up some holes that um, are pretty much textbook in that game. So, you know, credit to them, credit to the line coach Eric Guycheck. But um, that was really our you know, our, our, um, our motor up front. And then defensively, it was just, you know, a bend don't break mentality against them, make, make them make all the plays underneath. And, um, and it worked well for us. And then of course you played Adams in the next game. I mean, like when you look at, it's hard to go up against a team that runs the veer option. Um, basically talk about, you know, that game with Adams and what did they do to you guys that other teams couldn't do against you guys? Oh, I mean, they were, we, we never had them – we never forced them to have any kind of hiccup in their offense. They were – you know, it was it was never like a third and five or fourth and five. It was always – they were within one yard. So, you know, we didn't do anything to slow them down. They were a great team. Obviously, they're well coached. Uh, and they got a great quarterback. So, Pico – Pico's that, you know, that extra guy that they get in the run game where you're kind of unaccounted for. So, 
uh, we tried to simplify things down in the game plan last year. Um, and so we're going to, we're going to make some adjustments this off season and um, hopefully give them a better battle this year. Um, talk about, you know, you guys, I mean, I, you're going to be a very young team this year. Um, how's your quarterback situation going? You know, any names that we want to know about this season for Oxford football? You know, I think there's a lot of names, but I, I just, you know, I think this year it's all about together. Um, so I don't know mm-hmm. if there's any particular names I want to point out right now, but um, it, it, it's hard to see right now because we're rotating so many different guys in. Um, we are young, but a lot of our young guys have experience, you know, so um, we got a mix at quarterback right now uh, between Jaden Olofsson and Dom Cassisi and Ben Bruschi. Um, you know, Dom, um, Dom Cassisi was up on varsity last year as a freshman and basically took a red shirt role. So, he knows a lot of the a lot of the um, terminology, a lot of the reads that we have, uh, and we'll tinker with his strengths too as far as the offense goes. Um, you know, still have still have a lot of that same culture. A lot of the guys that didn't start last year uh, are still on our team. So um, it it feels like we might be young as far as playing experience, but I feel like a lot of these guys have been around and heard a lot of the coaching, and so they know what they're doing. So um, in that essence, we're in a good spot. Mm-hmm. Um, talk about the, um, of course you, I know that, I know you've had, I mean, you're a different coach compared to coach Bud over there at, um, Oxford, of course. Um, have you like taken the knowledge, I mean, of learned putting some of your, what you've learned at when you played college at SMU and then playing in the NFL, how has that transition been for the kids at Oxford? Well, you know, I think early on it was a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think now I, they both learned from me and I've learned from them of, maybe simpler ways to say it or um, buzzwords or keywords here and there that remind us of certain things, but we try to make everything to where we're, we're not thinking. So early on, there was a lot of that thinking going on. And obviously our, our whole defense is different. Our offense is different. Um, at the end of the day, me and coach Riley have a lot of the same um, demands of our team. You know, we want them to be good people on and off the field. We want relentless effort. Um, so we still, we still push the same, we still strive for the same things on and off the field, but um, the X's and O's might be a little different, and that's not good or bad. And before we talk about the, um, you know, before we talk about the um, schedule coming up for you guys, um, talk about the youth levels. I mean, obviously, when you look at Oxford football, obviously playing against the likes of Lake Orion and Clarkston in the youth levels, um, talk about the youth program and uh, going on around Oxford. You know, we got a, we obviously have a good middle school program, great coaches down there. Um, then you can even trickle down into our OJW program. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're moving along and we're, and we're starting to trickle down the, the schemes at the varsity level down into those levels. Um, you know, we'll start getting it more and more over the years. It, it takes time, you know, so, um, but anytime you can build a program um, and have good people around the kids, that's all you can ask for. And I think, I think we are, we are there. So, um, yeah, I mean that's obviously the the end goal is to where at the at the youth level they're having a blast, they're having fun, but they're starting to learn some of the words and some of the terminology of the varsity level. Then obviously at middle school it picks up year after year with maybe one new formation, one new play. So um, you know I think we're doing the right things. And at the end of the day, the the pinnacle of being in one high school town of Oxford, Michigan, is to play varsity football on Friday Night Lights. So um, you know we're getting these kids excited about working towards that goal. Um, talk about the course when we go, when we look at Oxford, we got to look at the, um, league you're in. Of course, the red is probably one of the most vicious divisions in the state of Michigan. Um, you got this year, you got Adams, you got West Bloomfield, you got Oxford Clarks. I mean, you got, you guys, you got Clarkston, Lake Orion and Stony Creek. Um, I want to break down your feelings of the, um, of your rivalries. Of course, the main rival is Lake Orion. Of course, um, the double, there's a trophy game, the double O trophy, um, talk about your feelings about the Lake Orion rivalry. Uh, you know, I never got to play in the Lake Orion rivalry. We always scrimmaged, um, uh, kind of, we did like our seven on seven type of deals. And those were always, um, pretty much you know, those, those were a battle out there just doing a seven on seven. So you, you always had a little bit of that, uh, and, uh, you know, that, that rivalry feeling, even though we weren't playing on the schedule. So. I don't think that's ever left Oxford or Orion. Um, and obviously it's a cross town rival. You got to, you got to drive through your town and then right through Lake Orion. And then you're at their stadium and vice versa when they come to us. So it, I, 
think it's pretty cool how you get to you know see your town away from your high school and then go through their town and same thing on the way back and hopefully you're holding that trophy but uh, it'll be interesting this year obviously with bell taking over how their team looks um, well, so you know, what is your kind of thoughts on coach over. chris bell taking over at lake orion what is your thoughts on that i'm excited to see what he can do with the with the dragons over there um I'm also talk about your rivalry with Clarkston. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at the Wolves, this is a team that really, um, you know, last year you've had some battles with Clarkston. I mean, you lost a lot of close games, and you finally got them this year. I mean, last year in the playoffs. So talk about how that rivalry is with Clarkston. Yeah, I mean, they got, um, they got obviously, a, a solid team. They're well coached, and they got some big guys up front. So it's always, uh, whenever you have linemen like they've had over the last few years, it's always hard to handle some of that. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be a rivalry for years to come, and it's, it's an exciting rivalry to have. Um, talk about your schedule this year. I mean, like, your schedule is like, yikes. If When you're looking at it, if you if you watch, like, I'm going like, yikes when I look at it. I mean, you're playing two teams in the Macomb Area Red Conference and Romeo and Chippewa Valley, and then your crossover is crossovers. Or you have Groves down there and Bloompia Hills is your crossovers. Um, break down... Break down your um those break down like um can you please break down like um you got Romeo open up the year um what do the Bulldogs bring against you guys and then you got to close out the year with Chippewa Valley. Yeah, I mean, we love being in the Red Conference. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna play football, you might as well compete at the highest level. So we're doing that obviously through our conference, and then we schedule hard non-conference games. You know, we were just even this year we had a hard time of finding for next year a week nine game that. Um, that that we felt was good competition. Mm-hmm. So every year we're looking for we're looking for the best teams to play. At the end of the day, once you get the playoffs, you're not hiding anymore. So to us, play them now, play the best, and go compete. So um, you're looking at Romeo, obviously week one, rock solid team, well coached again, um, physical up front. Um, and, and that's one of those games last year. I look back and we we had I think two drives in a row. We turned the ball over a couple punt snaps over the head. So there's things in that game. It only takes four to five plays in a football game to define the game. So um, there's, there's simple errors there to clean up. You like when there's errors that are easily identifiable. So that game, it's one of those ones that bugs you, but you get another one this year. Well, you get to go to Dan Barnable field this year. You know what I mean? That's Romeo stadium. Right. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. And that's, that's always an interesting game when you go down, go, go to Romeo and play and, um, you're playing, I mean, like playing, at, playing at Romeo, you know what I mean? You know, they used to have grass, you know, and now they just change it to turf. So what's your right. feelings about that? Grass to turf? Yeah. Grass to turf. <laughs> well, I can only speak from experience as a player. I always love playing on a grass field. You know, I felt like you left your, your joints felt better. Your knees felt better. There was always less injuries. Um, so even now the varsity team, we won't practice on our turf every, every day. We'll do. Mm-hmm. Our Monday's on the turf, and we'll move up to the grass field. Um, me, more for, I see too many non-contact injuries happen on turf. The guy plants his foot wrong, and there's an ACL. So just in the last couple of years, we've been very low on injuries, and I feel like some of that is attributed to how much we hit and the surface we're playing on. So we're thinking about those things to take care of our players. So there's nothing worse than seeing a senior go down just putting his foot in the ground, um, you know, and a piece of turf grabs his cleat the wrong way. Mm-hmm. And then talk about your Week 9 match. we got Chippewa Valley. I mean, like, I remember that game – watching that game and it was like so much emotion so much drama you know scoring that winning score late to get you in the playoffs i mean talk about playing against a scott merchant type team you know i think the thing i love about the kids from oxford is they don't see any team being any higher or lower or they just they just play their game you know we don't play up the competition or down the competition so we're going to come out and play the same brand of football it's gonna be physical it's gonna be relentless effort there's gonna be 11 halves of the ball but a scott merchant team again it's a team that's it's well coached, very well coached, um, and a, and a guy that knows what he's doing behind the behind the call sheet. So, um, I, I remember we were in stretch lines. We had 40 guys total on our stretch line. I think they had about 65 guys out on the field at that point. I said, oh, it's not that, not that big of a difference. And then they brought the rest of their team out, which was now their O line and the rest of them. And I think they ended up with about 90 on the field. So, when you're looking at size of program, it was I'm like, you know, it's one of those things you look at like, holy cow! But he's done a good job of getting guys to come out and play. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a dog fight last year and I'm sure it's going to be the exact same style this year. Um, talk about, of course, I mean, like any teams, you know what I mean? That in the, um, red this year that have your attention. I know a lot of everybody in there has got your attention, but you know, like 
any specific teams that's gotten your attention? Yeah, obviously, no game is more important than next. Uh, is there things that we'll focus on in the off season just to get just to see it? Yeah, you know, I, you know, if I'm just being honest, you got Adams. We'll we'll sprinkle that in right now during this time of the year to where we get our our 14 days to where we're seeing that type of offense because you only see it a couple times a year, and that's the whole. That's part of the point of that offense, right? Mm-hmm. It's 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 a good offense to start with, but also teams don't see it a lot, so it's harder to game plan for. So that's one of those that we'll take a peek at early, maybe for a team period here or there, and then we'll move on. And, um, you know, a lot of the other stuff, every team runs. So you can run your zone, you can run your gap scheme. and um, But when you're going to that, that Adams offense, you got to kind of commit a period to that. Um, obviously, of course, um, talk about obviously – how 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 have you guys been doing this off season? I mean, like a lot of, I know that you know there's going to be a lot of a lot of um a lot of excitement going around in the Oxford community for football starting back up. Yeah, obviously, you know we've been grinding um, since yep. November, just getting back on our feet, getting back on solid ground. So, um, you know, our philosophy and the it started with with obviously with Tate was trust, yep. love, build. We trust each other, we love each other, we're mm-hmm. building back. So right now. We're on the build phase. You know, we got a team that loves each other, that trusts each other. And um, so we'll keep building, you know, day by day by day. And, um, you know, that this team, it, it, they're coming out working. They don't feel like there's any pressure on them. They're going to, I feel like they're going to go out there uh, and they're going to play with, you know, Tate having their, their protection over top. So, um, you know, you can't ask for anything more than that. We have our core values. It's preparation, relentless effort, 111th. 111th just means do your job. And every day these these guys come out and play. They come out and prepare. They run around relentlessly, and they do their jobs. They love each other. They do their job on the football field. So um, there's going to be emotion, man. There's going to be times this year where you know something may be triggering, or you just you just you feel some type of way, and that's going to be okay. You know, I think we're talking about those things now to where we can get to the football season, recognize those feelings, but use those in a way to where um, you know we're, we're we're playing with passion. Obviously, of course, when you look at Oxford football, I mean, like, and it, it, I mean, there's a lot of passion, a lot of motivation. I mean, like this year, do you have like, um, do you have like a model this year? I think, I, I think I answered this earlier. Together. Okay. Together. I mean, like, yeah, that's a good model. I mean, I like togetherness. I mean, like, um, but, um, how, is, how do you think your freshman JV programs are looking? Of course, that sophomore class you had went eight and one your sophomore class now went eight and one last year um what is your expectations for that class yeah there's a lot of good athletes in that class and obviously that's the class that dom are the quarterbacks in so you know they got some good athletes they're they you know for some kid at that age you're kind of looking at okay is he is he athletic enough and is he physical enough can he survive at this level you don't want to put a guy in a position to where he might get hurt or might get injured. He's not just not ready physically. So that's kind of the first thing to look at. And then the second thing you kind of develop through your off season, is he mature enough to be at that level? So can he, can he handle the pressure of being at the varsity level? Um, is he going to be, be able to focus that practice? Um, so those are things we look at. We got probably five or six guys at that class that are, are playing pretty well right now for us in practice that might see some playing time this year. Um, talk about your um, talk about of course the multi-sport component because I know with Dom he plays basketball as well. Um, I know you got several wrestlers on your team as well. Um, talk about how important the multi-sport aspect is to um, to um, for your for the community at Oxford. Yeah, I mean, as an athlete, I feel like playing multiple sports gives you less robotic you know you're less robotic on the football field if, if all you do is you play tight end and you're running the same route over and over again you're going to get you're going to become robotic but then all of a sudden you go play basketball and you're learning how to box out you're stealing something from that game for the game of football or even in football as a tight end you're learning how to run a stick route and you're boxing out there you're learning how to play physical and space so that helps you in basketball so there's things you can steal from every single sport uh, that are going to help with all sports. You're just a better all, all-around athlete. You know, I think about Adam Thielen. He always talked about back in high school, he was a golfer. And he probably could have gone and played college golf somewhere. But that gave him the ability to handle the big moment when you had to look over a putt to win a round. He took that as, I can handle the big moment now and go up and make a big catch. So there's things physically that you're going to steal. And there's things mentally you're going to steal. And at the end of the day, you might get a coach that they say something one time that changes the outlook or perspective of your whole life. So I feel like if you're not going to play multiple sports and be around influential people, 
of limiting yourself in an essence. Um, also, when you look at, obviously, of course, the, um, when you look at um, how, what the other programs in Oxford, obviously, when you look at the regionalization, of course, the playoffs, the playoffs, and what's your thoughts on the playoff format this year? Um, it looks like they're going more to a regional format, it looks like. Uh, I have not heard how they're going to do that. It's, I mean, like, normally, when you look at Oxford, of course, geographically, you know, North of Lapeer, you know, you got Grand Blank, Davison, you know what I mean? You got Lake Orion in the South, Clarkston, you know what I mean? So when you look at, when you look at, um, when you look at, let's say if the MHA were to go into a play, to put everybody in the postseason and put everybody in like district they did in 2020, um, what was your initial thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, there's, there's plus and minuses to both sides. Obviously a season like last year, you feel like you earned something, right? You mm -hmm. made the playoffs. That means you went out and you took some games and you won. You earned that right to play in the playoffs. But, you know, I think both ways, you make that week nine a playoff game, you know, you're getting more you're getting more games. You might get an opportunity. You might have guys injured during the season that you're finally able to get back. It's You know, it's tough in high school football because you're limited, obviously, with the days you have in pads. You, I mean, it's basically un, under two weeks where you're, you're – it's probably safe to go in pads or even allowed – so really, you're getting 10 days before your first game in pad, which is not a lot of time. You know, at every other level, you're going to have a full month in pads. And then um, you're kind of right into your season. You might have injuries during that time. Your quarterback might go down. And that changes the whole outlook of your season, right? So um, I think it gives teams the ability to not only get guys back from injury, but mold into football players by the time playoffs come around. I'm looking at Oak Park back in the 2020 year. They make a Cinderella run, right? Yeah, start off 0-6. So I still can't believe that. That's yep. a team that was banged up and got some guys back. That that was their actual team. So that's where I could see it being a benefit. Whereas on the other hand, it is nice to earn that. Um, when you look at last year, of course, um, when you look at last year's playoffs, I mean, like, I mean, like, I thought you guys, I thought Clarkston, you know. But when you look at obviously last year with Troy and Bloomfield Hills, I mean, like, you know, both those teams made the postseason, but they were just blown out. I mean, like, um. You know, when you look at strengthening your schedule, I mean, like, I mean, like, do you think, I think playing a tough schedule really helps you. Do you think that's the case too? Yeah. I mean, they, they made it that way. So even if you're playing tough teams, you're still going to get the points of, of, of that good team because they're going to go out and win some games. Right. So it's, you know, obviously it's, it's hard to play these good teams, but you're going to get points. Even if, even if for some reason you do lose that game. I mean, like, and I think it's interesting part because, like, um, you know, when you get points, even when you lose, I mean, like, it, um, you know, but it does, I mean, it helps you guys get in last year because the wins against Chippewa, you know what I mean? That was a big one for you guys. Um, but playing that schedule, you know, helped you guys out big time, you know, playing the likes of the Red and then playing, of course, in the Mac Red. I mean, like, when you look at, this season, of course, you guys have that vicious schedule again, you know, coming up. I mean, like, but then you had Groves into the mix, and then you have um, Bloomby Hills in the mix. So talk about those two teams a little bit. Yeah, those are our cross-up games, crossover games that, um, mm -hmm. that's, I mean, the way our league works, is, those are kind of our draws for crossover games. Um, you know, obviously, two good two two good teams at our schedule. You know, I don't, I don't see much drop-off in starting the schedule from last year to this year. Um, and I think that's going to be really interesting to see what happens this year. Um, before I let you go, Coach, um, one, what are your expectations this year coming in? You know, it's, you know, I expect us to go out there and compete every game. You know, if, if we come out and, and we do the things that we're doing in practice is, is why practice is so important. Our kids have, have bought into that 100%. I think, you know, there will we'll be a team to contend with. You know, I think anytime you have kids that are going to go out and compete and put all 11 hats to the ball, you got a chance in any game. Okay, uh, Oxford Coach Jack Lyon, um, thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. Um, we're going to let you go. I'm going to let you enjoy your day, and, you know, make sure you stay cool and get ready for the season. Will do. Appreciate it. Thank you. Take care, Coach. When you look at Oxford this year, they're, they, I mean, like, there's going to be a lot of expectation for them. I mean, I'm really high on Rochester this year. I know Oxford this year, really high on them. Um. I think they're going to be a team to keep a very close eye on. I mean, like, I think they're going to be really good. I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, like, I, I think they could be very good. I mean, like, um, 
I like where Coach Zach Lyons' team is this year. I really do. Um, you know, when you look at Oxford this year, um, I think they're going to be, I mean, that schedule's tough. That schedule's vicious. Um, so we'll see what happens. I mean, we will see what happens. Hold on to your hats. The big one is coming to Friendship Park on Friday, August 5th from 5 to 9 p.m. Orient Township brings you the 18th annual Big Rig Gig Spectacular. See trucks, tractors, diggers, dozers, buckets, and backloaders side by side. Load up the entire family to see fire trucks and police vehicles. One night only. One night only. One night only. Come early, stay late for the insanity, and don't forget your camera. Admission and parking is free, free, free to the public. That's Friday, August 5th, Friendship Park, Big Rig Gig. Welcome back to the podcast here. I'm Sammy Termina here. Of course, um, it was nice talking to Coach Line this week here on the pod. Um, obviously, when you look at a um, a team like um, Oxford, I think they're going to be very good. Um, we'll see how it goes. I mean, I think it'll be very interesting to see what happens going forward there. Um, I think it's going to be interesting. I mean, I think it's going to be – I'm curious to see what happens with um, with Oxford. Um but a lot to break down, obviously, when you look at the Wildcats coming into the year. I mean, like, got questions at quarterback, got questions at everywhere. I mean, like, they got a lot of young young guys. I mean, like, so I'm very curious to see what happens with the Wildcats this season. So we'll see what happens there. Um, let's go now to our uh, main story, of course. Our other story here, it's in girls basketball. Um, Keith Paris is the new head coach at, girls basketball coach at Ferndale. Um I thought this was really curious. I mean, the MSU website did confirm this hire. Um, when I look at this hire with Burdale, I mean, like, I think when you look at the Eagles, um, here's a team that's got some questions. I mean, like, when you look at Ferndale, here's a team that I, I, when you look at the Eagles, I think they could be a very good team. I mean, I think with them, um, you know, they, I mean, I thought under Alcatala, they really turned things around. I thought they really, really turned things around real quick. Um, I thought, you know, they could at least, you know, be there. I mean, like, um, you know, last season, yeah, they went one and fourteen, but, but I was surprised that that they went with the hire of Paris. I mean, like, it went back to Paris. I mean, considering last year, I thought they made some strides. Um, but when I look at this hire, I mean, like, I'm going, like, interesting. I mean, really interesting. <laughs> because I think at the end of the day here, when you look at Ferndale, um, when you look at Ferndale, I think, um, you know, it. I'm curious to see the direction of the program, where it goes. Um, curious to see where the direction, you know, I mean, like, because when you look at the problem that Ferndale has, um, it is to me, it's really not that, um, when I look at Ferndale, it's really not, you know, I mean, you look at the boys program over there, Ferndale with the boys. I mean, you got Juan Rickman there. He's been there a while. Um, and then when you look on the flip side, you got, um, when you look on the flip side, you got, um, I mean, like you got, um, you know, the girls program, of course, I know last year, I know in 2020, 2021, they didn't have a season because of the pandemic. And then last season, of course, you know, going that 1-14, of course, they knocked off Oak Park. Um, looked really good to close out the year. Um, I thought when you look at Ferndale, um, they got some players coming in, coming back who I think are going to be very good. Um I mean, like for Coach Paris, um, they're in a favorable district, which is really interesting because you look at their district, they got, you got Ferndale, Ferndale University, Hazel Park, Warren Lincoln, and Warren Fitzgerald. That looks really manageable. Um, And then you look at, obviously, when you look at the Eagles, um, I think Ferndale's got a good chance to be very good. I think, you know, they got a chance. I mean, yes, they're going to be in the, in the blue where I think they're going to be very good. Um, they could be good. I mean, like, you know, when you look at, you got Farmington in there, you got, um, I, you, and Blue Bay Hills for sure. I think those are going to be the two girls teams. I think are going to really contend. Um, so Paris will have his hands full. I think he's going to really have his hands full, um, this season. Um, 
I am very curious to see how this team goes. Um, I think they're going to be just fine. Um, so there's a lot to look at heading in the year. There's a lot to look at with Ferndale coming into the season. Um, I think they're going to be a they're going to be a sleeper. I I just think that they could surprise some people. Um, they could do some damage this year. I'm really really high on this team's potential. So, you know, I'm very curious to see how Paris does. Having to go through the transition again, which is, I just don't know, I just don't understand why, Um, you know, when you look at, you know, when you change coaches a lot, you know, that do, that's never a good thing when you look at, you know, building program strength, building, you know, for, there's a lot to build at over at Ferndale. I mean, I know there's a lot to build with, so. You know, so I'm very curious to see how Paris does with building program strength, building the foundation of Ferndale basketball. Because when you look at, uh, you got Ferndale University, they have built a foundation under Coach Jane Hester. Um, she has done a, he's done a wonderful job over there. Um, I think when you look at Ferndale University and Ferndale right now, Ferndale University right now has an edge because of the familiarity, you know, the togetherness. Good basketball program over there. Really good program. Um, very curious to see what happens there going forward. Um, so when you look at um, so that is my thoughts on the um, girls basketball hire at Ferndale. Um, when I look at other um, when I look at teams looking at early on, um, when I look at football, and I want to talk a little bit football. Um, when I look at the gold, and I think I'm starting to get an idea where things are going to look this year. People ask me all the time, where, how is good, how is everybody going to look this year? And when I look at the divisions, and I study the divisions early on, um, I think when you look at the reds, the red, because, and there's a lot of good teams in that division. There is a lot of good teams. It wouldn't surprise me if all six teams make the playoffs this year, despite the record. I mean, you look at Oxford, they got a they got a tough schedule. I mean, Lake Orion's got a tough schedule. Stony Creek, I don't know. Um, but playing Port here on week one, that's a tricky game for them. I think it's gonna be very interesting. I am very curious to see how Coach Nick Merlo does this year. That is a team I am really curious to see how that goes this week. This year, I am very curious to see that team, that matchup. Um, when you look at West Bloomfield, obviously they're going to be the favorite. When you look at the Lakers, they're obviously going to be the favorite because of they've got experience, they've got quarterback, they got the running back, you got some receivers, you got a proven defense. The only issue I have with Coach Therese Grice's team is going to be up here. It's the mental mindset. When I watched your game against Nova last year in the first round, I mean, I don't know how many, how many penalties they took, and it and it took some really, really tough penalties. I mean, and even some after the play was over. If West Bloomfield wants to be back at Ford Field this year, you gotta be. They gotta be more disciplined. That's how I'm viewing West Bloomfield. It's not based on talent. I think they're going to get in the playoffs. That's that's a given. But when it comes to discipline and mental mindset, this is where I'm going to judge West Bloomfield. So that's what I'm here with the Lakers. That's my thoughts on the Lakers. With Adams, I've got concerns up front. Yes, Parker Pico's back. Um, but I got some serious concerns up front. I mean, Hassan Murray's back. That's a big deal. But the question is going to be is how Adams, you know, how are they going to handle the, um, how is Adams going to handle things? That's a big question I have with them. Big time question. Um, and then we look at, and then we look at, um, with Lake Orion. I mean, Lake Orion. I mean, le the key for Lake Orion this year for me, in my opinion, is cohesiveness. I think when you look at the Dragons, they got everything in play. You know, 
I know the quarterback position is going to be very interesting to watch. And that's going to be something to watch for if you're Coach Chris Bell. It's the quarterback situation and how the cohesiveness is of the team. Um, that is what I'm curious about with Lake Orion. Um, Stony Creek we talked about earlier. Um, West Bloom we talked about. Clarkston. I said talk to Coach Lyon early. Good team. Really good team. Question I have with Clarkson is this. When you look at that defense, they've got some questions. The defensive mind, the def I mean, yes, you got Kevin on Dighton. You got Desmond Steppens. You have Cole Dillinger up front leading both lines. The question I have with Clarkson is you have to have, you know, they got some balance. I mean, I'm curious to see how Mike Helm does at quarterback this year. He's got Ethan Clark. You got Cole Jarvis at wide receiver. I think Desmond Steffens is going to play both ways this year. So when I look at Clarkson, Clarkson's got the complete package everywhere. They got, they got a, they're, they're going to be solid. And I think they're going to be fine. I think Clarkson's going to be fine this year. I really do. Um, let's go now from the red to the white. Um, when you look at the white, um, people look at, obviously you got Harper Woods and South, I mean, Harper Woods coming into the league. Um, that is a big deal, obviously. I mean, Harper Woods coming in, they played a tough schedule the first year. Um, they played a tough schedule. This will be the first year in the league. Um, being in the white division, that's a big deal. Um, when I look at Harper Woods, I mean, like, and I've seen them on Twitter, um, their secondary look, their secondary, their playmakers, their line looks really good. They just got to find a quarterback and a running back. That's the big question I have with Harper, with them, Harper Woods. For Coach Rob Owen, is if you can find a quarterback, if you can find a running back, that is the big question I have for them. Um, and then there's A and T. Um, when you look at A and T, people ask me about Southfield. Is okay, you know, this is a team that's got a lot of playmakers. Um, Isaiah Marshall, quarterback, it's been the real deal. I mean, but when you look at A and T, and I look at them as a whole. The problem that I have with A&T is not on the offensive side of the football. They're going to score points. They're going to score some points. Now, when I look at a and I think they got to develop a little more balance. I think a little more of a ground attack. But I know Isaiah Marshall, he runs the RPO pretty well. You got proven pass catchers as well. But the problem I have with A&T is their defense. Their defense last year was not good. They were not good last year. They gave up their last four games, 59 points a game. That's rough. That's not good. I mean, last year when he watched that game against River Rouge, they gave up 45. That's too high. That's too high of points. You know, so if you're Coach Aaron Marshall, you have got to shore that defense up. Because if you don't shore that defense up, you're going to have trouble. That's how I view A&T this year. Great offense. Going to score high 40s. Um, I think maybe almost every game, I think they're going to score high 40s. Unless you have a very good defense against them. Um, which I think on that schedule, there's a couple of teams that I think have good defenses going against them. Um, but defensively is where I see A&T having the most problems this season is on the defensive side of the football. That's how I see A&T from an early get-go. Um, when you look at Bloomfield Hills, last year, and I talked about this earlier with Coach Line, was we talk about Bloomfield Hills um, last season. Was Did that schedule help them get in the postseason? Did that schedule help them? And when I look at that schedule, um, to me, I'm going to be flat out honest with you. It really didn't. Because, you know, yes, you finished undefeated, 9-0. You know what I mean? But you ran in no by Detroit Cap Central first round, and you got stopped. Now, what I'm really happy about this year with Bloomfield Hills is that you're going to be in a division with as you are up in the white. That's a big deal. That is a big deal for me. 
I think Bloomby Hills will be better in this division. Now, the record might not show it, but could they be a postseason team? Absolutely. I mean, Cedar Jackson's a very good quarterback. He is a very good athletic quarterback. I mean, they got a good, they got a solid, they got a solid offense. I'm very curious to see how they adapt to being life in the white. That's the question I have for Bloopy Hills. I mean, like, can they step it up a notch? Big question right there. Um, Rochester, of course. So when I look at Rochester, um, here's a team that I think has got a chance to be good. I mean, Alex Blano back. Yeah, Jaden Bolden, Grant Calgano. Um, coming back, I think Rochester's got a chance to be very good this season. I think they got a great chance. Um, they could surprise the people. I mean, the last two years, you know, they've been 11 and five the last two years. Um, the problem I have with Rochester has been their city rivals. They've been play they played Rochester and they played Rochester Adams. Um, both those games, oh no, sorry, Stony Creek and Adams. They have not fared well against them. Um, they haven't beaten Adams, I think, in 16 years. And that says something. I said more than 16 years. I mean, like, I know they haven't been since 1996. Um, but I know they blocked 16 straight to them. But with Stony Creek, I know they've they started to struggle recently against them. Um, so I think the problem with Rochester is they have got to, if they want to make the next step, you have got to knock off your city rivals. I mean, that is obvious. I mean, you figured out, you figured out the, um, everybody else, you figured everybody else out, but you just got to figure out playing your, um, your city rivals. That's a big question I have with them. Um, Oak Park, um, last season was rough on them. I mean, last season was really challenging for Oak Park. And when I look at them this year, the running game to be solid. Here's about their line. Curious about their secondary. Curious to see how everything goes for Coach Greg Carter. Schedule is vicious. Um, when you're going up against, um, open up against UD Jesuit, that's going to be interesting. And then you add, you just added a week eight against Orchard Lake St. Mary's. That's going to be tough. Um, and then your week nine is against Clarkston. That's difficult. That is a difficult non conference, to say the least. So when I look at Oak Park, you know, to me, I mean, if it comes down to a game of talent and schedule, I think the schedule might be too tough on these guys. I'm curious to see how they do this year. But if they win at least four or five games this year, I think they're a playoff team. I do. So that's my take on Oak Park. Um, Groves. Um, when you look at Groves, here's a team that's got some questions. I mean, I've heard a lot of things about Groves last year and say, okay, how is Groves going to be this year? Are they going to be solid? That's the big question. I mean, is Caden Hardy ready to make the next step? You got Mr. Rogers at wide receiver. Um, I'm curious who the running attack's going to be. I'm curious who their line's going to be. I mean, Groves has got a lot of questions. When you look at the Falcons, there is a ton of questions. When you look at when you look at Groves this year, I mean, last year it was rough. I know they, I know they had things rough, and I think when you look at Groves this year, um, they're gonna be okay. I think they're gonna be solid. I mean, but I don't know. There are some questions when I look at Groves this year. So, my thoughts on on Groves, I think they're gonna be solid, but. I just don't know if it's going to result in wins and losses. That is the question that I have with them coming into the year. Um, let's go now from the white division. Let's go to the blue division. To me, in my opinion, and this is what I've been seeing, is the blue is probably going to be the most parody division. I mean, like, there's a lot of parody. You know, and I talked last week to um, Coach um, Jason Albrecht of Farmington. Um, and when you look at Farmington... They're not bad. I mean, Farmington's not bad. Um, when you look at the Falcons, um, obviously you got Dominic Pesci coming back. That's a big deal when you return your starting quarterback. But so does North Farmington. North Farmington's got their star starting quarterback coming back in Ryan Shelby. Seaholm's got their quarterback coming back in um in um Colton Kinney. Um, 
I am very curious to see how Seaholm does in this division because Seaholm last year was not very good. They were one and eight last year. Um, they got a lot of experience back. Um, they got some questions this year. I mean, who's there going to be the running back going to be in the veer? Who's how's their line going to look? How's program strength going to look for Coach Jim D. Wall? Um, I am very curious to see what Stony Creek has. Really, really curious to see what happens with that. Uh, what Seahorn has. I'm very curious to see what happens. I think they're going to be solid. I think Seahorn will be solid. North Farmington is probably the team that a lot of people, you know, they got talent on this team, but it, but some people in the media are probably going to say, well, I don't know if I trust John Hurtstein's team. Last year, they make the playoffs. And, last, and this year, they have a very interesting schedule. I mean, they do got to play. They got Caledonia on the schedule this year. That's going to be interesting because, you know, when you look at Caledonia, well-known the Ottawa-Kent um, conference, of course. Um, that I mean, the Ottawa-Kent conference is a very good conference. I mean, let's not get that. I mean, like, don't get, don't get me wrong there. There's a lot of proven teams in that conference when you look at when you look at Rockford, you look at Holland West Ottawa, you look at East Kentwood, Jenison, Muskegon, uh, Muskegon, Reese Puffer. Um, you know, it's tough. The Ottawa Kent's a tough conference, to say the least. Um, so when I look at North Farmington, it's going to come down to can they find that balance? Do they have enough depth? That's the big question I have with North Farmington coming in the year. Um, Troy, you know, I talked to Coach Line about Troy earlier. And, you know, and when you go, when you have, when it comes to strength of schedule and the strength of schedule component, the strength of schedule component really, it really, you know, helps. I mean, like the strength of schedule component, you know, I mean, I don't know how, you know, Troy last year, how they got in the playoffs. Um, and then to lay an egg like that on regional television against Chippewa Valley where they got blown out 33-0 um, was mind-boggling to me. Yes, they got some playmakers coming back. You got Jaden Peacock at, playing in the DB positions at wide receiver as well. You got Darius Whiteside, who's an, who is a heck of an athlete. Um, you got um, Nolan Brock coming back at quarterback. Um, so when I look at Troy, they got some pieces. But the question is going to be for them is, can they maintain it? And in my opinion, will they have enough points to get in the postseason? To me, that is the big question for Coach Chris Frazier's team. That is going to be the big question that I have with Troy. Is do they have enough based on playoff points to get in? That is my big question. Um, Troy Athens, um, new coach, and Thomas Cook taking over that team. Um, when I look at Troy, Athens, when I look at Athens, I mean, last season, of course, it was a um, it was an all right year for them. I mean, Coach Billy Keenest, um, you know, did a really nice job with them. Um, now he departed this offseason, is now at Holly. Um, he took over the reins um, over there. Um, I think when you look at Coach um, Ke- when you look at Holly, I think Holly's going to be fine. The problem is for Holly in the Metro is you got to deal with, I think Brandon's going to be good. Um, Benton's going to be solid. Linden's going to be solid. Um, you know, Flushing's going to be solid. So, I mean, when you look at Genesee County, Southern Genesee County, they're going to be good. I mean, I think when you look at the Metro, you know, I think for Coach Billy Keenis, it's going to be it's going to be challenging for Holly this year. I think... It, now, with Holly, they got to play two OA teams. You know, they got to play Royal Oak and they got to play Abdale this year. So, that's going to be interesting to see when I look at them. So, when I look at when I look at Athens this year under Coach Tom Cook, watch for Anthony Asher this year. I am high on this kid. I think he's got a lot of potential at running back. I think he's going to have a big year. Now, the question for Coach Cook's team is who's their quarterback, who's going to be the pro- in program strength. That is the big question I have with with them, Troy Athens this year. That is the absolute big question I have with them coming into the season. That is a very, very interesting question mark for Troy Athens. That is a big, big question mark. Um, and then we have um 
I think I broke down all, all the teams in the division. I talked Farmington already. Talked North Farmington. Um, we got um, Seaholm in there. Troy and Troy Athens. That, to me, is the most paired division I have seen. I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens there. There's a lot of parity in that division. Um, I think Troy Athens, they're going to be solid. I really do. So, it's something to keep a very close eye on heading into the season. So, it's something to really, really keep an eye on. Um, as we go forward there, um, let's go now to the gold division. Um, you know, obviously when you look at the gold, um, you got to look at obviously the, um, you know, when you look at the gold, um, you got Berkeley, you got, I think Berkeley to me looks like the cream of the crop in this division. Um, who they got coming back when I talked to, um, coach Shields last couple weeks ago, um, I thought personally you know, when you look at Berkeley, I didn't think they would have a quarterback competition. Now they do. I mean, very curious to see how Berkeley does. I like Sarah Daniels at running back. Um, wide receiver is going to be interesting for them. I'm curious to see who is going to be their deep threats. Um, Coach Shields gave me an idea what they would be. Um, so it's something to really watch for. Um, Berkeley, I like their lines. Both their lines are going to be solid. Um, I think Berkeley's a player. I, I think Berkeley is seriously a big time player in this division. Um, I think they're going to be solid. I think they're going to be competitive. Um, and I, th they got a good chance at this, at the gold this year. I mean, like I know they haven't won a division title in a while. Uh, I don't know if they've won a division title ever, um, but this could be the year. I think Berkeley's got a good chance. Now, when you look at Avondale, Avondale's got a solid chance. I mean, when you look at the Yellow Jackets, they got athletes. I mean, Justin Sykes had, um, Wide receiver DB, I'm really high on him this year. Um, they got, I mean, they've got to address the running attack. That's a big question I have with Avondale is their running attack um, for Coach Corey Bell. I mean, they got the quarterback. I think it's Tyler Herzog is going to likely be the starting quarterback this year for them. Um, so when I look at Avondale, um, they could be a player in this in this division. I really think they could be. Um, I think Avondale is a team to really watch for. This upcoming season, a lot of high expectations for them. I think, don't be surprised if they make some noise this year. Don't be surprised if they do. Um, Royal Oak. Um, when I look at Royal Oak, obviously Dustin Truitt's there. They just named their captains, um, Mackay Jenkins and Ellie Finch. Um, Well-deserved for both of them. Um, when I look at Royal Oak, um, Hudson Seidel back at quarterback. Um, Makai Jenkins will be at running back. He'll likely be the Wildcat quarterback for Coach Justin Truett. I am very curious to see how this system is going to work at Royal Oak because this has been a team that, you know, they have, I mean, like, it's not like the, the um, past few years where they've really, really struggled, but the last few years they've struggled a little bit. And when I look at Royal Oak, this is a team that, you know, They've, there's a lot of optimism surrounding them this year. There's a lot of there's a lot of like confidence coming in the year. Ellie Finch leading the lines. I'm very curious to see how she's going to do this year, um, leading both lines. I don't trust that secondary one bit um, over there. Linebacking core is a question mark. Um, I think for Royal Oak, for 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 me when I look at Royal Oak, um, for them to be successful, they got to balance it out. Um, I think if they can balance things out, I think they're going to be a good football team. I mean, they could surprise some people. I mean, I know last year I was really hard on them. Um, I thought Royal Oak coming into the year had, um, had some, I mean, like, um, I thought they would struggle this last season. Then, you know, and when they knocked off Ferndale, that really opened my eyes a little bit. You know what I mean? When I look at what. Royal Oak can do. I think they're more than capable of having a nice year. I mean, I think they're going to have a nice year. Um, so I'm curious to see what Royal Oak has this year coming up into the system. Um, and program strength is a big concern for them. Um, so I'm really curious to see what Royal Oak has. Um, then we got Ferndale. Um, Ferndale, when I look at them this year, you got Tom on back at quarterback. Um, experience is a concern for me. Uh, when I look at their schedule, it is a major concern for me. Um, obviously, you're open up. Um, when I look, you're playing against Grand Rapids West Catholic. That's going to be difficult. Um, 
I am wondering how Coach Eric Royal got that game. I mean, Grand Rapids West Catholic is really good. I mean, so that's going to be interesting. Week two, I think they play. That's going to be a very daunting matchup for Ferndale. Um, but when I look at the Eagles, um, if they can find the magic that they had from 20 until, I mean, I think it was 20, 20, 2017, 28 to 2019, where they were 22 and 8 in the last, I think, three years. Um, I think Ferndale's going to be, I think Ferndale has a great chance here to surprise some people. I mean, that schedule alone, if you can win at least four, maybe five games, I think you're a playoff team. So when I look at Ferndale, um, I think they could surprise some people this year if things go right. So that is something that I'm looking at with the Eagles coming into the season. A lot of optimism surrounding them. Um, really, really curious to see what happens with Ferndale um, going forward. I think this could be a very interesting team to keep an eye on um, going into the year. High on Ferndale. Um, they, I think, I think it's the over. I think with them this year, and then there's Pontiac. Um, you know what Pontiac? Um, you know when I look at the Phoenix, you know they've really struggled. Um, but they've had a lot of positives lately. Um, you look at obviously the um, opening of a new um, of the new football stadium, opening the um, um, opening the um, new um, you know everything. You know it's coming back. You know. I mean, like, I know the word purple wall over at Pontiac has been mentioned a lot. Um, but when I look at a player like Davion Hall, who has really, really shined for them, um, I remember when he had five touchdowns in their um, 68-40 loss to Stockbridge. 40 points was the most that Pontiac scored, um, was, was the most they've scored for the first time since 2011 when they put up 66 against West Bloomfield. I remember... You know, when West Bloom was coaching their coach, Brad Zuby, who is now Brandon. Um, I mean, like, Pontiac, I think with Coach Ken Wade there, this is going to be a team that I think could do, could make some noise this year. I look at their non-conference. It looks very manageable. You had Detroit Osborne week one. You have Mount Clemens week two. And then week nine, you call out the were Garden City. You know, when I look at Garden City, it looks really manageable. <laughs> when I look at Detroit Osborne, that is really manageable. When I look at Mount Clements, that's really manageable. So if you're Coach Ken Wade, you know, I'm looking at that schedule. Yes, you've had a history of being 0-9. You know what I mean? You've had a history of being 0-9. When, when is, when is, this, I mean, I know Pontiac's had a lot of struggles, but when I look at the Phoenix, when I look at, a possibility going three and six this year looks very real. I think Bounty can win three games this year. I mean, maybe more. I mean, they got a good quarterback. You got a good running back. Um, you just got to, you know, you just got to make sure everything is stable over there, Pontiac. If you do, this is going to be a very good football team. And when I look at Pontiac, you know, they got the pieces to be very good. I think they're going to surprise some people. So if you're Pontiac, you know what I mean? Keep working. Everybody else in the, around the OA, keep working. You know? But I'm really high on Pontiac this year. I am really high on this team. I think they could do well. My final thoughts this week, obviously, we got a lot. Um, I do want to thank Coach Zach Line for calling in this week. Um, on the pod, um, talking Oxford football. Um, I'm very curious to see what happens going forward with them. Um, I think Oxford, you know, they're going to be young, but I think they're going to be, I think they're a sleeper in the red. I think they're going to be a sleeper. So something to really watch for going forward here. Um, obviously, you know, um, you know, so we'll see what happens going forward. Um, next week, Ian Locke is back with me here in the studio. Hope we have a call in with the co with the, with another football coach. We'll talk to him. Football, obviously, I'm um, heading in the season, so I'd like to thank um, Coach Line for coming on the pod this week. All right, now everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Um, take care, um, and um, I will see you all next week, everybody. Take care, and see you all next week, everybody. See you later, everybody. Stay strong, Oi Nation.